Good day everyone and welcome to this webinar. My name is Kanak and I'm an application engineer at NetSim. Today I will be focusing on simulation of low power wireless sensor networks using NetSim. In this webinar I will explain various features of NetSim for researchers to analyze networks and also interface MATLAB with NetSim. So in this webinar we will start with a quick introduction to NetSim. This is for those participants who are attending our webinar for the first time. Then I will introduce you to 802.15.4 based on wireless sensor networks. Next we will talk about the power models in WSM. Then we will continue our demonstration by explaining two example applications. Leech and interfacing NetSim with MATLAB to apply machine learning algorithms for sensor clustering. In the end, we will provide an understanding of various areas of research in WSN and leave a QA session to answer any questions. I request everyone to ask their queries at the end of the demonstration. We are currently muting all participants and you may write your queries in the chat box. Now coming to the theme of this webinar, IEEE 802.15.4 is a standard which specifies the physical layer and media access control for low rate wireless personal area networks. This standard focuses on very low cost communication of nearby devices with little to no underlying infrastructure. This is in complete contrast to Wi-Fi which offers more bandwidth and requires more power. The basic framework conceives a 10 meter communications range with transfer rate of 250 kilobits per second. Important features include real time suitability by reservation of guaranteed time slots, collision avoidance through CSMA CA and integrated support for secure communications. Two file layer frequency bandwidths are specified by this standard. One working in the 869 to 915 MHz bands with transfer rates of 20 and 40 kilobits per second and the other one in the 2.4 GHz band with a rate of 250 kilobits per second. Wireless sensor networks have varied applications in healthcare, utilities and remote monitoring etc. In healthcare, wireless devices make less invasive patient monitoring possible. For utilities such as electricity grid, street lights and water municipals, it helps in effective fault diagnostics, monitoring automation and communications. Remote monitoring applications include environmental monitoring of air, water and soil, structural monitoring for buildings and bridges etc. In forest fire detection the nodes can be equipped with sensors to measure temperature, humidity and gases. This will allow early detection for successful action of firefighters. In water quality monitoring, sensors enable the creation of a more accurate map of the water status and allow the permanent deployment of monitoring stations in locations of difficult access without the need of manual data retrieval. Wireless sensor network in NetSim consists of sensors, a sync node and agents. Now let us have a look at NetSim's GUI of wireless sensor network. So 
So we have sensors, a sync node and agents which are physical phenomena that can be sensed by the sensor. Sync node is the principal controller in WSN. It uses either beacon enabled or disabled mode. For beacon enabled mode, nodes use slotted CSMA CA algorithm for transmitting packets. Else, they use unslotted CSMA CA. Sensor is an electronic device whose purpose is to detect phenomena such as temperature, light, pressure, etc. and then provide a corresponding output. Also note that sensors cooperatively pass their data through the network to sync node. Therefore, the sensors act as both sensors and routers. Agent is an abstraction of physical phenomena. Any WSN has two components, the sensing part and the network communication part. NetSIM is agnostic to the sensing part and only simulates the network communication part. Previously, I told you WSN has two operational modes, beacon enabled and non-beacon enabled. You can see that in beacon enabled mode, nodes follow superframe structure which is composed of two parts. Contention access period without GTS which is guaranteed time slots and contention free period with guaranteed time slots. Now we will discuss the super frame structure. A pan coordinator can optionally bound its channel time using a super frame structure. A super frame is bounded by the transmission of a beacon frame and can have an active portion and an inactive portion. The coordinator may, <coughs> may enter a low power or sleep mode during the inactive portion. The active super frame shall be divided into 16 equally spaced slots and is composed of three parts. A beacon, CAP which is contention access period and CFP which is contention free period. Beacons are periodically generated by the coordinator these are used to synchronize the attached devices to identify the pan and to describe the structure of the super frames. In contention access period, all nodes have a packet to transmit shall use the slotted CSMA CA mechanism to access the channel. Contention free period is used to allocate slots for the nodes which require low latency. For this purpose, pan coordinator allocates guaranteed time slots for such nodes. NetSIM allows for modeling power consumption for devices in WSM. Here users can switch between battery and main line. Energy harvesting also can be switched to on or off. NetSIM also provides a power model matrix after simulation. The power model matrix gives users an in-depth detail on the power consumption in each device. Using these metrics, researchers can analyze the transmission energy, receiving energy, sleep energy, etc. of the sensor. Leach means low energy adaptive clustering hierarchy. In Leach, sensors are divided into groups called clusters. Each cluster has a cluster head to which the sensors send their data. Leach uses DSR protocol in network layer. And in the MAC layer, it uses ZigBee protocol or 802.15.4. This is an example of a cross-layer algorithm implementation. We will now see how cluster heads are elected in Leach.
In leech, the number of sensors are same in each cluster. The sensor which has the maximum power in each cluster will be elected as the cluster head. That cluster head collects the data from its surrounding sensors. Then the cluster head will transmit the data to the sync node. The cluster head in each cluster is changed dynamically. To implement leech in NetSim, we have written a leech.c file and now I will open NetSim C source code. As you can see, a leech.c file is added in the DSR project. The function fn netsim leech check destination is used to check if the device is the destination. The function get next hop is where the static routes are defined. The function assign cluster head dynamically identifies the cluster heads as the sensor that has maximum remaining energy. The function identify cluster is used to identify the cluster of the sensor. Now I will rebuild DSR and Zigbee projects. Now I will replace these DLS in the NetSim binary folder. After renaming the original DLS, I will open a network scenario that I have already created. Now on running the scenario, On viewing the packet animation, you can clearly see that sensor 17, which is the cluster head of cluster 1, collects the packets and transmits it to the next cluster head, that is sensor 49 of cluster 3. Finally, the packet is received by the sync node coming from sensor 49. As you noticed, with some addition of a function, about 100 lines of code, we have modified NetSim WSN to implement a leech. I hope you understand how simple it is to write your own code in NetSim.